Have you ever been watching a TV show or a movie and there's a scene with a shot of a bottle of whiskey and you don't recognize the whiskey? Not from the bottle, you don't recognize the label, you don't recognize the name. It's probably not some rare and unknown whiskey to you. It's probably just made up. They do this all the time because it's much simpler to make up fake brands of whiskey and other spirits rather than clear the use of the actual brands and the actual logos. And so today on Whiskey Whereabouts, we're gonna have a little fun and we are going to take a look at some fictional brands of whiskey that show up in some famous TV shows, famous movies, and we are gonna subject them to rigorous scientific analysis, thorough background research, and we are gonna come up with some ideas as to what the real whiskeys might be masquerading as these fictional brands. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here, with you, on Whiskey Whereabouts. This came up because there was a 4K re-release not too long ago of Pulp Fiction. There is a scene where John Travolta goes to pick up Uma Thurman for their big night out. And uh, while he's waiting downstairs for her, she tells him to go make a drink. He goes to the bar and he pours something called McCleary's Scotch Whiskey. There's a, a, a clear close-up of the bottle that shows the label of this whiskey that is completely made up and not real. And somebody asked me, you know, what do you think that this fake brand actually stands in for? Pulp Fiction McCleary's Blended Scotch Whiskey. So this is one, again, it says right on the label, blended scotch whiskey. We know that it's a blend. We know that it's on the bar at uh, the gangster boss's house when John Travolta goes to pick up the boss's wife. And we know that uh, his boss, Marcellus Wallace, is, is wealthy. He's described by Harvey Keitel as a millionaire. So we know he's got a very nice, well-stocked bar in his nice house. He probably doesn't have the best of the best sitting out for people, visitors, to just come up and make themselves a drink, though. It's probably kind of leans back to the old sort of style of movie that this movie's kind of evoking where people just had, you know, spirits out to mix highballs and drinks uh, when you come over. And I doubt that it's something like a Johnny Walker Blue, something that's really premium. Um, it says right on the label that this whiskey is made by John McPherson and Sons. So this is a sort of typical label for a blend, it's pointing out to us who the, 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 the parent company and the blender was that made this so-called McCleary's blended scotch. But I also think that Marcellus Wallace is probably the boss. He's probably got a lot of people like Travolta coming by and he probably doesn't want to have the sort of lowest well scotch whiskey out at his home. It's probably not J&B scotch. I think to me, this just feels like, especially for the time, Dewar's White Label, a perfectly decent blended scotch whiskey that is um, distilled by John Dewar and Sons. So that uh, sort of parent sort of company name tracks with the two, uh, with the John McPherson and Son. It's a little bit cut above. It's not the lowest sort of blended scotch. It's not as common as some other uh, scotch whiskeys might be. So it's a little bit nicer without sort of breaking the bank for just being set out for people to make drinks if I had to choose, I'm gonna say that the McCleary's is a stand-in for the Doers. Hennigan's, Seinfeld. Okay, so Hennigan's whiskey shows up more than once in the course of Seinfeld, but it's introduced in this episode called The Red Dot. It's the one where George buys Elaine a defective uh, cashmere sweater for a gift, it has a red dot on it. And then over the course of this episode, uh, Jerry uh, finds this, um, whiskey in his cabinet. He says it was a gift that he uh, considers it useful only as paint thinner. He's not a whiskey drinker, but he gives a pour to Kramer and Kramer is struck by the lack of smell on his breath of this whiskey. He begins uh, pitching an endorsement about the no smell uh, whiskey, but we know more about this whiskey than just this lack of smell issue that Kramer's so focused on because later on in the series, um, there is an episode where Frank, uh, George's father, is telling his harrowing, traumatic war story, and it's a very stylized shot, and the bottle is in the foreground, and we can see a good 
half of the label. And what we can see on that label is that Hennigan's is a malt whiskey with a 12 year age statement. So this is not blended scotch whiskey. And what we can infer about the whiskey with the lack of smell quality, the creamer is very focused on, is it's a very light whiskey. It's probably um, not a very uh, smoky whiskey or have any other really big flavors since it sort of seems to disappear and leave no trace on your breath and there's no indication that you've been drinking it. So when we think about a whiskey like that, especially here in the early 90s, uh, we're thinking probably of a lowland whiskey if we're talking about a single malt scotch. So we're looking for a 12-year whiskey, and maybe it's Glen Kinchy 12-year. It's not, you know, that popular or big as a single malt, especially back then. But it was definitely uh, available because it was and remains a whiskey that goes into Johnny Walker, and it had been featured by Diageo's predecessor company in the late 80s, starting in the late 80s, as one of the classic malts. So it's possible that somebody who had a sort of eye out for, you know, stuff that was a little bit unusual, harder to come by, had gifted this bottle to Jerry, maybe as an introductory bottle for somebody who, who considers whiskey paint thinner, maybe it gives them a really light lowland single malt whiskey with a decent age statement, so it is pretty approachable. Maybe. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm wondering if Hennigan's is Scotch whiskey at all, because Hennigan's is an Irish name. It's not Scottish at all. And Jerry doesn't seem to know anything about whiskey. So what if it were Irish whiskey? Well, Irish whiskey, generally triple distilled, it's a little bit lighter, and it may have a slightly different quality. Now imagine Kramer is used to drinking inexpensive blended scotch whiskey, he's used to drinking J&B, and somebody hands him 12 year triple distilled Irish whiskey, he's going to be struck by how light this whiskey is. Maybe that manifests for him with this lack of smell or whatever. Ever. And so if it were Irish whiskey, well, what would it be? And I'm thinking it could very well be Redbreast. Redbreast has a 12 year and it fits the rest of our parameters. And Redbreast had been dormant. It hadn't been made for uh, several, several years. And Jameson's parent company resurrected Redbreast and reintroduced it to the market in December of 1991, and the Red Dot episode of Seinfeld aired on December 11, 1991. Case closed. <laughs> Hennigan's is actually Irish whiskey, and I'm going with Redbreast. McCutcheon lost. Okay, so McCutcheon whiskey is one of those things that shows up from time to time in different flashbacks and in the lives of different characters on Lost, which is a thing this show Lost did. It was a show with all these mysterious sort of connections between all the characters revealed in flashbacks and things, um, objects and songs and brands and all these things would just show up in the different characters' lives. So. The McCutcheon whiskey is one of those things that shows up more than once, but it's most heavily featured when it's introduced, uh, when the character Desmond goes and meets with his beloved Penny's wealthy, wealthy father in his office. And in the office, the wealthy man has a bottle of this McCutcheon Scotch whiskey with a 60 year age statement on it. An, an incredibly high age statement whiskey to just have lying around a poor to one's guests at the office, but he's a very, very wealthy man, and he pours himself a glass of this 60-year whiskey and declines to pour a second glass for Desmond, trying to make a point to Desmond, explaining that a swallow of this whiskey costs more than he earns in a month, and explaining, basically, that he's unworthy, Desmond, of this whiskey, and as he is unworthy of his daughter, Penny, and bottles of this whiskey show up uh, in the possession of different people, meaning this is not some sort of one-off or incredibly limited production whiskey. There is a whiskey distiller out there that has marketed a batch of 60-year age statement whiskey, and it's out there in the world for people to come across it. Um, McCutcheon 
Mac, M-A-C, Cutchin, says Speyside to me, maybe Highlands, Mac Allen, Mac Duff. Um, so I'm thinking that's where we're located with this distillery. The last thing about this whiskey is that it comes in a bottle with this very vibrant, bold, red label. And when I see that sort of aggressive type of red in a Scotch whiskey presentation, I'm thinking they're probably trying to communicate to me a wine cask. It's probably sherry, maybe something else. Let's go with sherry because it's more common. And so I'm looking for a distillery with a long continuity where they would have uh, the ability to have a to bottle 60 year aged whiskey that is probably in Speyside and probably uses sherry casks. And that's how I'm getting to Glen Farkless. Glen Farkless is a long time family owned distillery with a lot of continuity. They have a lot of whiskeys with advanced age statements. They have commemorative bottlings from certain dates and they have a 60 year whiskey. It costs $20,000, but they have it. And they also um, utilize sherry uh, casks in making their whiskey. So that is the closest analog that I could find. Uh, $20,000 for a bottle means a dram, 50 mil pour, is probably gonna be about $1,400. So depending on Desmond's situation at the time that pour is, you know, plausibly more than he's earning um, in that month. Could be a slight exaggeration as, as the old sort of wealthy man is trying to, trying to point out um, his low position uh, to Desmond. Um, but otherwise, I think that this one is probably the best fit we're going to find. I'm gonna say McCutcheon is actually Glenn Farkless with a 60 year age statement. Glenn McKenna, how I met your brother. This is another whiskey that shows up more than once in the world of the show. And in particular, a 30 year age statement of the Glen McKenna. So what else do we know about this whiskey? Well, we're actually, we actually have a lot to go on with this whiskey relative to some of these others because we get somebody actually trying to describe uh, what it tastes like. So somebody uh, in the show samples the whiskey and describes it as having a smoky quality with hints of cedar. The character who's giving these notes is probably trying to communicate to us that it has an exa exotic cask. It's not a traditional bourbon aged whiskey. There's something different, uh, at least his palate, about this whiskey. So we're looking for a whiskey that's in a different uh, cask. We are looking for a whiskey that's peated and there's another sort of quality about this whiskey that has to do with its sweetness. Because at one point, a bottle of this precious whiskey is destroyed and the gang has to sort of um, pass off a fake. And the way they do this is they mix up a concoction with a lesser bottle of spirits and they add various things. And a couple of things they add are chocolate syrup and ketchup, two very, very sweet Thing. So we're looking for a whiskey that has, you know, a lot of a sweetness. It's probably, again, sherry cask because we're getting the impression that it's from a different type of cask. Maybe a little bit more exotic, but let's go with the sherry because it's a little bit more common. That's also peated. And the last thing that I would say about this whiskey is when I think of Glen, I think of Highland whiskey. I'm aware, you don't need to tell me in the comments, there are whiskeys that start with Glen outside of the Highlands. I'm aware uh, that there are whiskeys that fit this description in various places, including Campbelltown. You don't have to tell me that, but there's a huge, huge, huge volume uh, of whiskeys with this style of naming for the distilleries up in the Highlands. I'm gonna put this whiskey in the Highlands. So I'm looking for a Highland smoky peated whiskey with some sherry casks with a 30 year age statement with some sweetness. And the whiskey that I'm gonna identify is Highland Park. Highland Park's 30 year is um, available so that this whiskey can show up more than once. It's not one unique bottling. It does have sherry whiskey, sherry matured whiskey in the vatting. And if you read um, some of the tasting notes for the Highland Park 30, you will get 
a lot of uses and derivations of chocolate, which obviously is something that they keyed into when they were trying to fake this bottle. So I'm going to say that the Glen McKenna is Highland Park, Glen Gooley, Archer. So this is another whiskey that shows up in the world of this TV show more than once. It's pretty common. It's like a running thing. And let's start with the name again. Let's start with the first half of the name. Um, Glenn says Highland to me, probably Speyside. Second half of the name we'll, we'll disregard. We won't get into that. The other thing about this whiskey is it's a red herring sort of situation because it's described as being presented in bottlings, um, blue label, black label. So it's Johnny Walker, right? Johnny Walker blue, Johnny Walker black, except it's definitely not Johnny Walker. The only things we know about this whiskey tell us that it's not. We know that the Glen Gooley is a single malt. We know that it has some pretty decent age statements, 21 year, 24 year. At least the 24 year, I believe, is described as 43% ABV. So it's not Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, even the blue label is bottled at 40%. It's blended whiskey. We can disregard the blue and the black labeling as helpful clues. So I'm looking for a whiskey that fits these sort of criteria. And there is sort of a likely whiskey that people point to, mostly because the label featured on the show closely resembles a, the style of a label, at least until a few years ago, of a very well-known whiskey. But before, before we just adopt that, let's see what other criteria we can we can fit. And what do we know about Archer? He's, you know, he likes nice things, but his his sort of sense of style, his taste is very old fashioned. His favorite movie star is Burt Reynolds. He his style icon is Don Draper. He is sort of old fashioned. He knows um, things that are well known and well established would probably appeal to him. So it's probably not a really trendy whiskey. It's probably not a new whiskey. And he or somebody at some point, I think, describes the whiskey as mid-range. So we're thinking not something that's spectacularly overpriced. It's a little bit more accessible despite these high age statements. So the label in question corresponds to the label before they sort of change the more modernized uh, sort of shape of the bottles and the sort of cut glass with the logo of the Glen Fiddick. And that seems to fit, right? The, uh, we're in space side. Uh, Glen Fiddick has a 21 year. I have a bottle of it right here. They have a 25 year, um, not a 24 year. They have a sort of long history, well known, huge brand, and that seems to fit what we're talking about. And if we're gonna say that Glen Fiddick 25 stands in for this blue label, it's also 43%, so it overlaps. I don't have any uh, reason to shoot down the sort of, I think, popular understanding that the Glen Gooley is a stand in for the Glen Fiddick. So those are my absolutely correct, definitive answers for what the real world analogs for several fake brands of Scotch whiskey and Irish whiskey in movies and TV are. And if you disagree with any of my sort of deductions and conclusions, let us know in the comments what your alternate nomination would be, but show your work and tell us why. Also, if you've got uh, one of these fake brands you've seen in a movie and TV show, uh, curious as to what it could be a stand in for, throw that in the comments and we can all try to see if we can figure out what a good real world analog for it would be. In the meantime, if you are interested in actual Scotch whiskey that exists in this world that you would like to learn more about, check out this video. And as always, remember to subscribe right here for more videos like this one.